I'm She is a mixed media art installation inspired by the life of an 18th century Georgian woman and the 18th century seasons of modern celebrity culture. In 2017 I was commissioned by Barrington Hall to create a piece of work that responded to the life of Anne Bangham. Anne was the wife of Thomas Harley and he was mayor of London in the late 18th century. Um, so he, he was a British politician, a very powerful man. And sadly there was little to go on, but in 2016 the National Trust had purchased a, a beautiful court mansion once owned by Anne. We do know that she maintains the social standing of wife of Lord Mayor of London. She was a socialite for time who attended many parties, um, entertained and hosted many, including royalty. So the installation really grew from research and contemplation of the life of this 18th century woman and I wanted to explore both a, a factual and a hypothetical narrative of her life in high society and her experience of motherhood and womanhood in this era. In looking at Anne's life and her place in high society, I couldn't escape the thought of Anne as a, as a watched woman and this was the, the, the thought that I kept returning to. The modern culture of celebrity um, evolved extensively in the latter half of the 18th century in part thanks to the increase in print and particularly obituaries which encouraged a public interest in the lives of others. Anne was no doubt well acquainted with the experience of life under the watchful eye of the public, but in thinking about this I thought of the way in which women in general experience life, and I kept returning again and again to thoughts of the gays. Particularly this excerpt from John Berger's Ways of Seeing, uh, where he discusses the way in which a woman consistently surveys herself throughout her life. He says, uh, a woman must continually watch herself. She is almost continually accompanied by her own image of herself. While she is walking across a room, or while she is weeping at the death of her father, she can scarcely avoid envisaging herself walking or weeping. From earliest childhood she has been taught and persuaded to survey herself continually and so she comes to consider the surveyor and the surveyed within her as the two constituent yet always distinct elements of her identity as a woman. And so this is where the lover's eyes came in. Um, eye miniatures became popular in the, again, the late 18th century and were usually watercolours depicting the eye of a lover, spouse or child. Um, the frames were highly decorative and jewelled. Although they began as a romantic and clandestine token of love, given to a secret lover, um, they were often also worn in remembrance or in mourning. So I began creating larger versions of the lover's eye. Um, I wanted um, to recreate that feeling of living beneath the gaze of others, of being watched, and to really, really communicate how, as a woman, you, you really do grow with that um, subconscious awareness of, of being watched constantly. Um, but of course, particularly with Anne in mind, because she was so much more in the public eye. And so, um, this is what they represent. They are a, a recreation of the experience of Anne and, and her life. The flowers, whilst directly referencing femininity, they're also in reference to Anne as a mother. Anne was somewhere between 47 and 51 when she took up 
part time residence at Burlington, and she had had eight children over a 10 year period, um, and she had lost three of them 10 years prior while they were still quite young, which was quite common at that time, but that isn't to underestimate the grief that she must have felt. The 18th century is a, a really interesting time for Britain with regards to our interest in flowers and many new species were arriving in the country and the Georgian gardens were really coming alive with these exciting new blooms. But also flower symbolism began to creep into a space of public interest. Lady Mary Wortley Montagu was an English aristocrat and a prolific letter writer and in, I think, 1717, in one of her many letters sent back to England, she wrote at length about the way in which the Turkish used plants and their symbolic meanings to exchange entire messages in the form of code. And although in Britain we already had our own meanings for plants dating right back to the late medieval period, it was these late 18th century letters from Lady Mary Wortley Montagu that really sparked an interest. And although the British interest in the secret language of flowers didn't really take off at this time, this was where it really started. So really I took flowers that were popular in the Georgian garden, hollyhocks in particular, um, but also flowers that today are known for their meanings related to motherhood, fertility, abundance and family and I created a sort of framework to the room. So in entering the room you become in a sense encased in this femininity and this role as a mother, um, a fertile child bearer and as you approach the bed you see a bed abundant with hollyhocks and these were here to symbolise Anne and, and the, the children that she lost. I was also really struck by the, the two-dimensional image that remains of Anne, wife, mother, host, and how in a sense I was furthering this two-dimensional image that remains. As we celebrate the centenary of suffrage, it's worth remembering that feminism didn't begin with the suffragettes um, long before this in 1792. Mary Wollstonecroft published um, A Vindication of the Rights of Women and this is one of the earliest works that dealt formally with the subject of feminism. Georgian women such as Wollstonecroft were instrumental in influencing the suffragettes and the feminist movement as a whole. Women were often well read and engaged in politics, science and philosophy but societal structure didn't quite allow them the same freedom of practice as men. But I began to think about what else may have been possible for Anne. Um, I began to imagine her as a woman with an interest in pre-suffragette feminist philosophy, a woman who, given the opportunity and without the obligations of societal constraints of her life, um, would perhaps have liked to devote her life to medicine. I imagined her as a strong and intelligent woman whose strength was employed for the provision of support for her husband, rather than other things that she may have pursued. On Anne's bedroom wall you will see many references to groundbreaking women of her time, um, women like Caroline Herschel, the German astronomer, um, Anne Mirandi Manzellini, the anatomist. Um, Mary Louise La Chapelle, the French midwife, and in a sense this is like the bedroom wall of a young modern girl, it's Anne's wall of interests and aspirations. As an artist of mixed European and Black Caribbean heritage, I felt unable to create a piece of art that responds to the lives of the privileged society of this period without at least a subtle ele element of acknowledgement and reclamation in loyalty to my heritage. Slavery is inextricably woven into Britain's historical past, the Georgian period in particular. 
and so there is an element of subverting the colonial gaze which may or may not be apparent to visitors but it's there if only for myself as a part of the work. I'm She is on display at Barrington Hall in Herefordshire from May of 2018 to December 2019.